Today I want to discuss fricatives. So you can see here in the consonant chart, in the starting from the left, you have all these manners of articulation, and we have covered plosives, cover fricatives today. What is a fricative? So I say a fricative because I'm using the word fricative as a noun. Fricatives are a class of consonants. The label fricative is based on classification of sounds according to the manner of articulation of the consonant. Sometimes you might see the word spirant being used instead of the word fricative. When you articulate a fricative sound, the two organs, the two articulators that are involved in the production of that particular fricative come very close together and touch each other. So far, it's similar to plosives because they come close to each other and they touch each other. But they don't press hard on each other. They stay enough open apart to allow air moving in a way that would produce audible friction or frication between the two articulators, through which the consonant can be continuously pronounced. If you look at the fricatives here, starting from the left, you have the sounds fa and va. So fa is a labiodental fricative. In the articulation of this sound, the two articulators are the upper teeth and the lower lip. What I do is I approach, I approximate my lower lip towards my upper teeth and they touch each other, but they allow air to pass through the teeth from in between the teeth and the lip. And then this is why I can pronounce fa, but I can also continuously pronounce fa. I can say <laughs> or if I start vibrating my vocal folds, I can say <laughs> maybe the easiest one would be the alveolar fricatives. So you see here, in the case of labiodental fricatives, you might say, oh, the air is passed through your lip and teeth because maybe you have some space open between your front teeth or on the edge of your teeth like it's not really that flat and also your lip is soft so you can allow air through it but if you want to clearly establish what i said you can you can move on to the alveolar fricatives in which the tongue approaches the alveolar ridge and touches it and what happens here is you touch it, but you don't press it hard. Because if you press it hard, then you can only release it once. And you can say, T. But if you alleviate the pressure and let air pass through continuously in the form of a friction, create some friction or frication, you will produce the fricative, which you can continuously pronounce. So in a way, you can say that the fricative version of t is s. S t s. If you look at the consonant chart in the IPA sheet, you would see that the fricative row is the busiest one. All the cells are filled, and in every cell you have both voiced and voiceless versions. But if you look at a particular language, in, the, in our case English, it doesn't mean that you will get all the fricatives. You get all the fricatives are filled because they exist in across languages, but not necessarily in any specific language you will find all the fricatives. So, in English, we have the fricatives Examples. The words feel and Veal both have fricatives as their first sounds, which are fa and va, respectively. Interestingly, both sounds have the same place of articulation. The difference between the two is not in the manner of articulation because they are both fricatives. The difference is in voicing. In fact, all the fricatives in English come in pairs of voiceless and voiced, except for ha, which does not have a voiced version. It does have a voiced version, but not in English. So now examples for all these thigh, thy, sip, zip, ship, measure, haul. The other fricatives 
do not exist in English but can be found in other languages. For example, in Arabic, Arabic has voiceless pharyngeal fricative ha as well as the voice pharyngeal fricative a. Uh, the pharyngeal fricatives both exist in Arabic. The voiceless one, the ha, appears in the word habibi, which means dear. Another language that is famous for its fricatives is Spanish. A very famous sound in Spanish, which stands for both b and v, the letters b and v, in the intervocalic position, is this symbol, which looks like a beta. It's a voiced bilabial fricative. So in a word like abuelo, for example, uh, the b is fricativized into v, abuelo. Avellana, so the V in Avellana, again, is pronounced like this, in this hazelnut. So what's going on here? If you study Spanish historically, you would know that there's this word called spirantization, which basically means becoming fricative or fricativization. It's a process in which a sound, for example, a stop, turns into a fricative. Spanish is a language in which this happened historically by turning voice stops into fricatives in the intervocalic position. So I mentioned examples of B and V, but then here example is G. For example, the word for place is lugar. The voiced velar plosive has been spirantized into the voiced velar fricative, this symbol. So the word lugar is pronounced Lugar. The alveolar plosive, the voice alveolar plosive, which is pronounced dentally in Spanish, has been spirantized into the. So, for example, the word for fan in Spanish is ventilador. Ventilador. Spirantization is a form of lenition, and I will cover lenition in a later video. Fricatives are part of a larger class of sounds which are called continuants because they can be continuously pronounced. Continuant sounds that are not fricatives are referred to as frictionless continuant. 